The only matter that's off the table is taking a pass on it. We've got to act. Senator Cornyn, you're next. Good morning, Madam Secretary. When you uh, testified before this committee almost two years ago, you were asked whether inflation was transitory. And you told the committee that you saw important transitory influences at work, but you did not anticipate that inflation would be in any way permanent. You predicted our economy was on track to get back to more normal operation, and that inflation would decline over time, something we all hoped for. To be fair, you weren't the only person who forecast transitory inflation. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell, did the same as did the President of the United States. We now know that inflation rose to a level not seen in more than 40 years, and that inflation accelerated, particularly following the enactment of the partisan American Rescue Plan Act in 2021, and then with the so-called Inflation Reduction Act in 2022, which together added $2.6 trillion to our national debt. Obviously, all this stimulus going into a constrained economy with supply chains uh, the way they were, um, workforce levels down, obviously created, uh, port was like pouring gasoline on the inflation fire. And though inflation has now come down to 6% or so, that's hardly good news to my constituents who are still struggling to keep up with rising costs. We know both record housing costs, which we've talked about a little bit here today, and high grocery bills are squeezing consumers all across the country. And to make matters worse, real average hourly earnings, the cash earnings of all workers adjusted for inflation, declined last month and are down over the last year. In other words, because of inflation, workers have gotten a pay cut. Well, first we saw high inflation and then higher interest rates, of course. And uh, that brings me to the failure of the, uh, of the Silicon Valley Bank and another bank in this last week. Some have suggested that this was an example of mismanagement at the time of higher interest rates and higher inflation. Others are saying, where are the regulators? Were they asleep at the wheel? Many have suggested that banking regulators need to focus more on regulating banks, protecting depositors and taxpayers instead of straying off course and examining so-called climate-related risks and other social engineering goals. I think these are all fair points. When you look at the confluence of concerning economic factors, there is one unavoidable truth. We need to get our fiscal house in order, something that the administration pays lip service to, but which seems uninterested in working with Republicans to try to address. And the president's budget proposal, of course, just makes that clear, because it offers more taxes, more spending, and more debt. Spending would be at historical levels relative to the economy. The national debt would continue to grow. Hello, friends. This is important news for all Americans. The White House has just announced new housing initiatives to boost home ownership. The White House has just announced new housing initiatives to boost home ownership. President Biden is aiming to help millions of households financially through this new plan. This news comes as the Federal Reserve plans another rate hike. My dear friends, I'll be going over everything that you need to know. So please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Today, the White House announced a series of new initiatives designed to boost U.S. home ownership alongside data detailing housing aid that has been provided since 2021. New initiatives include allowing home buyers to leverage income from accessory dwelling units, expanding mortgage lending, the launch of a new pilot program at the Department of Agriculture for alternative eligibility criteria, 
and additional home retention assistance programs for U.S. veterans. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development announced a publication of new policy designed to allow homeowners to use a portion of the actual or prospective rental income to be added to the borrower's effective income. This is so they may qualify for an FHA insured mortgage. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs will also launch a new home retention program for veteran borrowers, saying the new VA servicing purchase program will help veteran borrowers who are behind on their mortgage payments and who do not qualify for traditional home retention options. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is also currently developing reforms to existing rules to help homeowners when they have trouble making their mortgage payments. The U.S. Department of Treasury recently released new data measuring housing aid distributed by the Biden administration, pegging the total figure at more than $12 billion in support. This includes the Homeowners Assistance Fund, which is a $10 billion fund designed to assist those financially impacted by the crisis. U.S. consumers struggled with inflation in 2022. Living costs remained stubbornly high, and there seemed to be no end in sight. Inflation has managed to cool nicely in 2023, but a big part of the reason stems from the interest rate hikes the Federal Reserve has been implementing since early 2022. Federal Reserve officials look set to hold interest rates steady for the second time in a row next month, but they're far from calling an end to their tightening campaign. Policymakers across the hawk dove spectrum have signaled in recent days that they're inclined to forgo a rate hike at their October 31st meeting following a run-up in bond yields that has tightened financial conditions. But with the data on the labor market and inflation showing an economy that is still humming, the Federal Open Market Committee is unlikely to take further rate increases off the table. Minutes from the Fed September gathering released this week showed policymakers see a slew of risks that could push inflation higher than they expected, including shocks to food prices, a stronger housing market, and a slowdown in the decline of goods prices. Recent economic data also highlighted a resilient economy, despite the Fed raising rates more than five percentage points since March 2022. Hiring surged last month as employers added 336,000 jobs which has doubled the number estimated by economists and the most since the start of this year. Producer prices rose more than forecasted, and core inflation, excluding shelter and energy services, also picked up. Fed officials are increasingly focused on trying to balance the risks of triggering a possible recession against the need to get inflation back to target, a strong signal that the rate-hiking cycle is over risks a powerful rally in stock and bond markets, inducing more consumption and growth just when the Fed officials are trying to moderate demand. Fed officials also see it as essential to keep a lid on inflation expectations and have repeatedly emphasized their commitment to restoring price stability, even if it means raising rates higher than they currently expect. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on all of this? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Dear friends, every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.